in most neighborhoods, like the, mine, the reality is, is that this is the kind of neighborhood experience that I have when it comes to capacity development. Well, first thing happens is, is that we have organic community convening. You know, people know each other. We see each other at Tower Market. You know, we're doing our thing. Like, I know you, you know me. Hey, bud, hey, guy, because no one knows each other's names, right? But you sort of know each other, right? And then what happens is this, is that something happens. Issue this phase two, something happens. In my neighborhood, uh, that was when Muni announced it was going to run a bus up the middle of our one-lane street without any public hearings. They just decided that's going to be part of our new strategy, right? So, it w I mean, it's not like, like Muni bus was actually going to run all the time, but their plan was to have it run up our street all the time. Our community went crazy, and we went from having no neighborhood association to 250 members in one week. So we rallied around the Muni uh, problem. Um, and, uh, and then we designed a solution, right? So this is phase three. So in phase three, we came together and said, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? What's our plan of action, right? And of course, um, you know, the bottom line is that we won. You know, we stopped Muni um, from running this bus line up our street with no public hearings or an opportunity to appeal the decision. And we implemented and we succeeded. Now the reality is, then what happened? <laughs> All right, see you next time. And usually, what, um, in many experiences, people just go back to their houses and go back to their lives, and go back to their plasma screens, and they're just waiting for the next email next month, next year, and two years for something that's going to be significant enough for them to re remain, get back to the table and get engaged. Well, that's problematic, and let me show you why. So in here, as I've talked about levels one, two, and three, these are the capacities. This is like the major land use, transportation, economic development. This is short-term sort of issue addressment stuff, and then level one is sort of day-to-day -day, um, relationship such, is that as you can see over time, if you use this event-based type of work depending on the nature of the events, the reality is is that the capacity of the community goes like this based on the previous model. So then it's Russian roulette, right? So if the earthquake strikes right here, well you're in good shape because you're all at the table right now and you're talking about transportation and land use and you really got your act together. Over here, if this is when the earthquake hits, guess what? not a positive situation for your community. So I reject the first model. I reject it. I don't like that model. So we have, we have some alternative solutions that we think we want to explore, right? So uh, this is the model I think we as a city need to adopt for all of our capacity building in the neighborhoods, right? So think about this. Phase one, organic community convening. Phase two, issue opportunity identification. Phase three, solution design. Phase four, is solution implementation, so we still see the threads of the previous experience, but here's the game changer. Five. Step five is the one that I think is going to make a big difference. First of all, when we get to that phase, we pull everyone together who are participating in the first four phases and we say, okay, everyone sit down. How do we do? Do we do well? Could we have done better? What do we learn from it? How can we b build in infrastructure to make that, um, our capacity more effective next time? Should we start a neighborhood association? Should we start a neighborhood watch? Um, should we go 501c3 so we can go out and raise our own money and spend it and not have to beg you know, people in the city departments to give us money to do work? Maybe that's what we should explore. And then the last one that I really think is important is, why don't we recruit some new members too for our organization? Because one of the things I find when I was in the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services, when I went out in the community, a lot of people, were, it was always the same people in the room, and they just got a little grayer year after year in those neighborhood associations. And yet I knew there were thousands of new families moving to the city, but who's doing the outreach to them? We've got to make that a mission to get these people to the table. And then the thing that's important is this. We look for the next opportunity, and we, we leverage that in order to start this cycle all over again over and over and over again. So in my neighborhood, we moved right off of the Muni bus issue to pedestrian safety, because you know what? These streets aren't safe, people, and we've got to do something about it. And we've got to get neighborhood leaders to begin to think like that about how to keep their community engaged by looking for opportunities to bring people together to talk about. Let's plant a mural. Let's plant trees. Let's talk about revitalizing our merchant corridor and keep those people engaged in a conversation on an ongoing basis. If you look how a normal community does develop, I always point to the North of Panhandle community. Now, this is the point that I would say was the changing point for that community, and that's when um, young Ombre, um, a 14-year-old um, young man, was assassinated at 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, in the middle of broad daylight, um, right around the corner from Leela Gill's home. And Leela Gill's a community leader who frankly just was so fed up and said, are we really the kind of community that can see a young man be killed in broad daylight and bleed out in front of our homes and then just go back to 
feeding our kids and watching TV and acting like nothing's wrong with our community. And she said, no, I reject that. And so Leela and a bunch of other amazing people came together and actually began meeting at Cafe Neon every week, demanding accountability from city agencies. I mean, she had Kamala Harris and you know, Ross Mercurim and everyone coming out there. I went out there all the time. And what the community did was they used the intensity of a violent act, public safety, to bring people together. So what happened is, is that um, in this first phase, what we see is people coming together and achieving level one capabilities. Like, you're my neighbor, I know you, you know me, how can we work together, how can we address this challenge, right? What happens though is that as a community begins to see that they've actually addressed the public safety issues, what's the next thing they realize? Well, look at our neighborhood. Maybe our neighborhood, the condition of our neighborhood, kind of like invites this kind of behavior. There's gang tags everywhere, the trees are blocking all the lights, you know, homes are looking a little shabby, the whole tipping point, broken window theory thing. So saying, if we're gonna, if we're gonna you know, stabilize the public safety issue, maybe we should start working on clean and green. So they start doing park cleanups, they start doing uh, graffiti watch and those types of things. Community, again, organizing and achieving level two capacities. The, the graffiti watch, the tree plantings, those are short-term planning actions that require people to come to the table for over a period of about three months and then they're done. But it's a good short-term planning exercise. And then in North of Panhandle, how many people have been to the Divisadero Corridor in the last year or so? Transformed. I grew up taking the 24 to visit there when I was a kid. I wouldn't even get off the bus in that neighborhood. You know, it was not the kind of neighborhood that was like a really safe, fun place to hang out. That neighborhood has become like one of the hottest neighborhoods in the city right now. And part of that is a result of the neighborhood, which said our economic corridor needs to serve the community, the goals of the community, not the region. And they went and fought to bring in restaurants and businesses they felt would meet the needs of their local residents. But it's taken years to achieve that, and that achieves your level three capacity. So this is a very good example of the organic process that already is happening with our communities. And if we assert the capacity P in the middle of that, I think it will help them accelerate and move through these phases faster.